Let's paint! Ta-da! I decided to record uh, this delicious salad in my sketchbook so I brought my uh, strawberries I'm going to paint them along with basil and maybe a few other ingredients so yeah let's paint Ta -da! I really like to paint fruit because they are so colorful and so juicy here I start by uh, creating the shape of the fruit by you know crushing my brush on the paper not outlining and coloring it but just using the belly of the brush to create this kind of oval strawberry shape and then I use some negative painting keeping some white at the top of the fruit to give a sense of light even if the fruit are not so light at the top and it's a kind of a simplification of the light this approach works really well to give depth to your subject and a lot of contrast and keeping it loose by simplifying the values then I always try to use a splatter on my fruit and vegetable and food sketches because I think it evokes a bit of the juiciness of the subject and it works really well to make it really yummy. Here I am adding a bit of green underneath so that the strawberry doesn't seem to float in the air. Not worrying too much about the melting between the red and the green. If it's juicy enough it doesn't get muddy and here I just added a bit of crinacridone gold for a sense of warmth. And more splatters! Yeah, but not the last in this piece. how this first step looks really juicy and loose and melted color everywhere just the big shapes but now let's start working with the little leaves as a bit of details even a bit wet in wet and they are quite important for the contrast of colors and to depict the strawberries of course and I keep putting some more pigment at the bottom of the strawberries so that it's really bright and full of colors and not too watery and also dark of course at the bottom. Once again this is important to give a sense of volume of the strawberries and contrast so I will keep darkening the bottom as I go and as the painting is drying. I keep working with my strawberries painting these little leaves quite carefully but letting the green mixing in the red for a sense of looseness and harmony as a way to connect the washes and to make the strawberries look like a whole. A bit more negative painting to define this uh, strawberry. Look how this is powerful. And here I am just softening the edge with a bit of uh, clean water to only keep the edge I am interested about. And here I put a bit of salt on the strawberries to try to evoke the little seeds, but it didn't uh, really work out. And now let's take care of this uh, lovely basil. So I use quite a warm color at the beginning because in my opinion greens are usually more lovely when they are warmer and I know that I am going to add some cooler and brighter greens just afterwards. So I'm playing with curvy brush strokes trying to get the shapes of the leaves. And now let's start giving some dynamic with the stems. I try to be confident with my brush strokes, playing with some thickness variations. And now back to the leaves with a brighter, brighter green. This can work, of course, even if it's quite an unnatural green, because of the warm glow I put underneath and because of the darker spots I am going to add on the leaves, like the darker shade I also used for the stem. 
So you can see how I like a lot uh, mixing the colors on the paper and rather than mixing some yellow with some turquoise maybe on my palette to create some greens, I prefer to use uh, some almost uh, yellow shade on the paper and then almost turquoise shade and together they're going to create some gorgeous variegated greens. I keep trying to define the strawberries by adding some darker color at the top using negative painting but this time not uh, with the white of the paper showing but an underneath uh, layer, red layer, which already dried. You can tell I am trying to give a sense of light for my leaves too, letting some white showing as well. So for example using a brush stroke for half a leaf and then the other brush strokes for the nose. Keeping half the leaf we imagine catching the light white. I paint some leaves warmer and some other colors. I keep playing with my colors. That's really more fun and it makes the painting so much more interesting. Oh, but I have to keep enhancing the juiciness of these uh, strawberries! So I tap the brush with my finger to create the splatters. You need to have enough water and pigment in your brush so that uh, this works. Let's mix a bit of a darker cooler red by mixing the Cridacolon Fuchsia with a bit of Ultramarine and Moon Glow in order to paint uh, the shadow underneath the strawberries. I am using quite a lot this uh, Winsor & Newton pointy in the round uh, size 7. It's a red sable and really pointy. Now let's get darker on the leaves so I use some straight uh, pigment Perian Green to reinforce the nerves. On the real thing the nerves are lighter than the leaf itself but that's always a bit of an artistic license and an interpretation of how you want to express it. Once again a bit of a darker bluer tone for my shadows underneath the strawberries and then I thought I could try to give a bit of a sense of detail with just a few strokes for the seeds. But I figured out that I really didn't want to put them everywhere so I just uh, put a few trying not to overwork the whole thing. As a finishing touches I used my uh, sword liner, that's a cheap synthetic brush by Pro Arte, just to give a sense of lightness with really thin calligraphic lines, especially on the stems and leaves. This can be a bit scary but really really fun to do and I think it works uh, really well to give a stronger style to the painting. So here is for my delicious painting, I hope you enjoyed the demo. Loose, juicy, gorgeous. And now the recipe, easy and healthy. So the key things of this recipe is some greens along with the strawberry, but you can also use a blackberry or maybe raspberries or some red fruit. And with some olive oil, a lot of olive oil and basil because that's so delicious with it. Along with some cheese, so I use some feta cheese, I think it's just perfect. So some sort of goat cheese or parmesan, parmigiano is really good, you know, with this kind of herbe de Provence, oregano, which are delicious as well. So these are really the key thing that you don't want to miss uh, if possible to get the whole spirit of the recipe and you can also add uh, some uh, seeds and a young white spring onion and a few olives and some other things uh, you like. Bon appétit! Bon appétit